friends, uh, uh, dear friends, it's time to continue our session. And the next speaker is Dmitry Korikov. And the title of the talk is uh, Stability of Solutions to the Two-Dimensional Electric Impedance Tomography Problem. Dima, please. Hello, everyone. Can you see my slides? Yes. Yes, uh, I'm very pleased uh, to give a talk on this conference. In my talk, I would like to present our results on the stability of, so of solutions to the two-dimensional EAT problem obtained in our joint works with Mikhail Bereshev. Uh, so let's get started. Um, uh, let M uh, be a compact surface with boundary gamma and metric tensor G. Uh, we denote uh, the harmonic function in M uh, with uh, the trace F on uh, the boundary gamma by UF. And uh, the operator that maps F to the normal derivative of UF on uh, gamma is called the dirichlet Neumann map. And uh, the electric impedance tomography problem consist, uh, consists in the determination of surface from its dirichlet Neumann map. Uh, such a surface uh, is not unique, uh, namely, uh, assume from now that all surfaces uh, we consider have the same boundary gamma, diffeomorphic to a circle, and the surface matrix induce the same length element on gamma. Uh, and uh, let mg and m prime g prime be such surfaces. Uh, then, uh, according to the well-known result of uh, Lasse and Dumann, uh, their Dirichlet Neumann maps can cite if and only if there is uh, a conformal map between uh, surfaces that does not move points of uh, its uh, common boundary gamma. Uh, so uh, the Dirichlet Neumann map determines not the surface itself, but only its conformal class under uh, the equivalence above. And it is natural to understand uh, this conformal class as a solution uh, to the EAT problem. Um, it is natural to ask the question, are the solution to the EAT problem stable under small perturbations of the data? Or in other words, is the conformal class of M prime G prime close uh, to um, MG? Now to the conformal class of MG, if um, the Dirichlet Neumann map lambda prime of M prime G prime uh, is close to the Dirichlet Neumann map lambda of MG. And uh, here the crucial question um, is what do we mean when we say that conformal classes are close to each other? Intuitively, the closeness between conformal classes of M prime G prime and M G means that there exists uh, a near conformal diffeomorphism between them that does not move uh, the points of their common boundary gamma. And now I'll give the precise definition of uh, near conformality of the map in terms of the so called uh, dilatation of the map. Um, so uh, let beta be a diffeomorphism between M and M prime, and let X uh, be a point of M. Recall that uh, beta is conformal at X uh, if and only if its differential is isotropic, that is, it enlarges the length of tangent vectors regardless of their di directions, or in other words, it maps circles to circles in the tangent spaces. In the general situation, uh, a diffeomorphism beta maps circle in the tangent space at x to some ellipse in the tangent space at uh, beta x with the major and minor semi-axis L plus and L mi minus respectively. Intuitively, uh, beta is near conformal at x if the ratio between major and minor semi-axis uh, is close to one. That is, the differential of beta distorts the circle slightly. Um, this ratio, L plus over L minus, is called the dilatation of the map beta at x. 
while its supremum over all x from m is called just the dilatation of beta. Um, then um, we have uh, the following facts. Um, uh, the dilatation is equal uh, one if and only if uh, a beta is conformal. Uh, the dilatation of composition of um, uh, the maps does not exceed the product of the dilatations of individual maps. The composition with uh, a conformal map does not change the, dil the dilatation and the dilatation of the inverse map is equal to the dilatation uh, of the direct one. Okay, um, next, um, if uh, M prime, uh, if Mg and M prime G prime are diffeomorphic, then one can introduce the following distance between them, be, between their conformal classes, tau and tau prime. Take the logarithm of uh, the dilatation, then uh, take the infimum over uh, all diffeomorphisms between Mg and M prime G prime, that don't move uh, the points of the common boundary. The resulting value dt is called the Teich-Müller distance uh, between tau and tau prime. In view of the properties of the dilatation, this distance uh, does not depend on the choice of the representatives, uh, m prime m, uh, m prime of uh, the conformal class tau and mg uh, of the conformal class um, tau. Um, uh, and uh, this distance obeys uh, the triangle inequality. It uh, is symmetric and so on. And uh, now introduce the space T of conformal classes of all surfaces of a given topological type and with the given boundary gamma. Here, the topological type of surface is encoded by its orientability and genus. Uh, up to homeomorphism, an orientable surface of genus M is a disk with M handles, while uh, the non-orientable one is a disk with M Möbius bands uh, glued in. All surfaces of a uh, given topological type are diffeomorphic, so the type Müller distance is well defined on uh, tau on uh, T, uh, and uh, the type Müller type Müller distance is uh, actually a metric on T. And out with this metric, uh, T is a version of the type Müller moduli space. Uh, well-known type Miller model space of uh, for surfaces. Uh, we also consider uh, the data space D, which consists uh, of all D and maps of surfaces of a given topological type, the same as that of T. Uh, by the distance uh, D uh, D op uh, between two. Uh, Dirichlet to Neumann maps, we mean just the operator norm of their difference. So we have uh, the space T of solutions to the EIT, the data space, both uh, equipped with the natural matrix. And now we can formulate our stability result. Um, the map R, uh, which acts uh, from uh, the data space D, onto the type Müller moduli space T and determines uh, the conformal class of uh, a surface from its Dirichlet to Neumann map is continuous. Uh, in other words, if the surface M prime G prime has uh, the same topology and the boundary as MG and its Dirichlet to Neumann map is close to DN map of MG, then there is a diffeomorphism beta between them with the dilatation close to one, and such that it does not move uh, the points of uh, the common boundary gamma of uh, these surfaces. We uh, emphasize that this is the most natural stability result for the two-dimensional uh, EIT problem. 
This result was uh, proved first uh, for the orientable case and later for the non-orientable case. In addition, um, uh, we, um, the following local stability estimates are obtained. Um, here, let uh, mg be fixed. In the orientable case, the Tyke Muller distance between the conformal classes uh, of Mg and M prime G prime uh, is equivalent to the operator distance between their Dirichlet and Neumann maps. In the non orientable case, we have the following estimate. Uh, here, the Tyke Muller distance between uh, um, uh, conformal classes of surfaces is bounded by the operator distance uh, to the power of one third. Mm. And um, note that in the in these results, we assume that the surface topology is fixed. Uh, it is natural to ask, uh, is the topology of a surface stable under small perturbations of its uh, Dirichlet to Neumann map? The answer is negative, uh, namely by cutting uh, small disks uh, from MG and attaching a finite number of small sandals, one provides the surface whose GN map is arbitrarily close to lambda, but the topology has changed. Instead of additional handles, one can glue in a small nebulous bands to make M uh, prime non-orientable, new surface non-orientable. At the same time, one cannot remove the existing handles or Möbius bands uh, from M uh, without significant changing of its uh, Dirichlet to Neumann map. Uh, the proof of uh, our stability result uh, is constructed for arbitrarily fixed uh, Mg and any M prime G prime having the same boundary gamma homeomorphic to M uh, and such that lambda prime is close to lambda, we construct the near conformal map between mg and m prime g prime. Um, the construction consists of the following steps. Uh, first, we consider the orientable case and recall that uh, the conformal class of uh, metric me metrics and uh, orientation on the surface determine the complex structure on it. In our construction, we consider the holomorphic embeddings E and E prime of uh, surfaces M and M prime respectively into CM. Here, um, WK, uh, the components WK are holomorphic functions on M with respect to complex structure on it. And WK prime are holomorphic functions on M prime. Um, the images, uh, e of M and T prime of M prime have uh, their own uh, matrix induced by the surrounded space CM. The key property of holomorphic embeddings is that their images, uh, E of M and E prime of M prime, are conformally equivalent to the surfaces MG and M prime G prime uh, themselves. So we can work with the surfaces embedded in CM. And the main uh, advantage here is that the embedded surfaces uh, can be reconstructed from the boundary traces of holomorphic functions. Uh, to this end, uh, we use uh, the well-known generalized argument principle. And uh, we use uh, it uh, in the following way. Uh, we take one projection of a point as a coordinate and then apply uh, this formula, the generalized argument principle, to find all other projections of the same point. Uh, in general case, it doesn't work, but it works for a special class of embeddings called projective embeddings. The embedding is called projective if any point of its uh, image uh, of its image surface is contained in some cylinder such that the projection acting from the intersection of the cylinder and the surface 
to the base of the cylinder is also an uh, embedding. For, uh, for such projective embeddings, uh, uh, we can reconstruct images using the generalized argument principle, using this formula. And the same uh, for prime surface. Uh, and as a co corollary, if our embeddings are projective and the boundary traces of um, WK and WK prime uh, of their components are close, then their images are close to each other in CM. Here, the measure of closeness of images is, uh, for example, uh, the Hausdorff distance between them, which is the infimum of all positive R such that our neighborhood of E of M contains E prime of M prime and vice versa. And this fact is uh, true since the corresponding integrals uh, for coordinates of points of E of M and E prime of M prime are close. Of course, actually, the proof of this fact is quite technically difficult. We have problems with small denominators in the integrals. Uh, also, each surface um, admits projective embedding. Uh, the dimension n of Pn depends on a, a surface, but only the surface M is fixed. M prime is not fixed. So we should consider e, the embedding E prime uh, just as a holomorphic map, uh, and then show that its projectivity follows from the closeness of uh, boundary traces of components uh, of these embeddings, and so on. Uh, next, uh, we find uh, the canonical map that since the boundary traces uh, of holomorphic functions on M to the boundary traces of holomorphic functions on uh, M prime in such a way that their difference is as small as the operator norm uh, of lambda prime minus lambda. Once this is done, uh, we fix some projective embedding E of M and construct the induced, uh, the induced embedding uh, E prime of M prime in such a way that the boundary traces of components of um, E and E prime are connected with, uh, via the action of the canonical map. And now we uh, know that if lambda prime is close to lambda, uh, if lambda prime is close to lambda, then E prime of M prime is close to E of M in CN uh, in Hausdorff uh, distance, for example. Um, uh, okay, um, to construct our canonical map, we use the fact that the boundary traces of holomorphic functions are solutions to this equation and vice versa. Uh, this equation is just the Cauchy-Riemann equation uh, restricted on the boundary. Here, uh, d gamma is the tangent derivative and the normal derivative here is replaced by the d n map. And note that the dimension of the image of this operator um, determines the surface topology um, by, by this formula. Um, due to these facts, uh, the construction of our canonical map is reduced to establishing the stability of solutions to this equation and the small perturbations of uh, lambda. To this end, we need uh, the dimension of the image of the perturbed operator to remain unchanged and here, in, in this place, we use the condition that uh, M and M prime have the same topology. Okay, and uh, now we've come, we've come to the punchline. Um, we have two, surface, uh, two surfaces, E of M and E prime of M prime, close in CN, and we intend to construct the near isometric diffeomorphism alpha between them. 
intuitively the best candidate for this is the map that sends uh, the point of the first surface to the closest point of, of the second one. That is uh, alpha of psi is the minimizer uh, is the minimizer of the squared uh, distance between psi and psi prime over psi prime from uh, e prime of m prime. This would work for surfaces without boundaries, but such a map is not well defined near the boundary of E of M. We have the boundary and we have problem. And we need to modify our definition of alpha by adding a certain, uh, a certain uh, near boundary term uh, to the square distance function. Uh, to be minimized. If uh, E uh, prime of M prime coincide with E of M, that is if uh, the surfaces are conformally equivalent, then the minimization of uh, this uh, function uh, provides the identical map alpha, which is of course an isometry. But we proved that uh, if uh, E uh, prime of M prime is close to E of M in CN, then the map alpha is still well-defined. That is, the minimizer is unique. Uh, it is a diffeomorphism uh, between uh, E of M and E prime of M prime. And it is uh, near isometric. And now we consider the composition beta of uh, the first embedding our near isometric map between uh, the embedded surfaces and uh, the inverted uh, second embedding. Since the embeddings are conformal and the, comp uh, the composition with them doesn't change the, the dilatation. And we have the following estimate uh, of, uh, for the dilatation of beta uh, here. Uh, also by construction, but uh, doesn't move the points of gamma. So the logarithm of the dilatation of this map beta bounds the Teichmüller distance between conformal classes of M and M prime. And by this, we prove our stability theorem in the orientable case. Uh, in the non-orientable case, we implement the similar scheme but we have no holomorphic functions on M and M prime. Nevertheless, uh, holomorphic functions exist uh, on, the, on their orientable double covers. Uh, and the orientable double cover of uh, surface is uh, the orientable surface with the isometric involution on it, such that uh, M uh, is a quotient space of uh, tilde, uh, M tilde by the involution. For example, the Möbius band uh, is obtained by uh, identifying the opposite points of the cylinder with respect to its center. So uh, one can reduce the proof to the orientable case by considering symmetric embeddings. That is the embeddings uh, for which the composition with the involution tau is equivalent to the, uh, the component-wise complex conjugation. Uh, the symmetry is needed uh, since the near isometric map between covers should induce the near isometric map between uh, the surfaces M and M prime themselves. Here, the main obstacle on this way is that one requires the closeness of the DN maps of the covering spaces. In, is such a closeness follow from the closeness of the G and maps of the original non-orientable surfaces, M and M prime? We can't prove this fact directly, but earlier we derived equations um, that describe traces of symmetric holomorphic functions on the cover through the Dirichlet Neumann map for the original surface, not the cover space. And now the proof uh, is mainly reduced 
to establishing the stability of solution uh, to these equations. And uh, the main difficulty was um, that this equation is nonlinear. Here, I should note that uh, this equation, uh, uh, after excluding the constant CF, contains uh, uh, the homogeneous map of degree 3. This degree 3 leads to the exponent 1 over 3 in our stability estimate uh, for the non-orientable case. Uh, so um, my talk is over. Thank you for your uh, attention. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Maybe let me comment uh, the result. The, uh, this estimates right right this one okay uh, and show it. yes 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 uh -huh. thank you uh, let me publicize a little uh, the result by the way uh, i have uh, i have uh, i i have some relation to uh, this activity uh, in in the part of um, of the proof of uh, continuity of the map uh, of the map uh, which solves uh, the problem but uh, the estimates the estimates is uh, some impressive personal achievement by dmitri and this estimates show that to measure the distance between uh, surfaces in the impedance tomography prob problem is uh, very natural by the use of uh, Teich, -Muller, Teich Muller distance. Due to this naturality, uh, since it is very relevant instrument in this uh, problem, uh, we have, uh, Dmitry has uh, uh, very, uh, very nice um, Lipschitz type estimates. Nothing like that was uh, known before in this kind of problems and the only results uh, were, were about uh, logarithmic stability and so on. But uh, after the after uh, finding uh, the natural metric, take Muller metric, the result uh, turns out to be, uh, in a sense, uh, optimal. Uh, Lipschitz, Lipschitz stability in this problem, and the matter is that uh, to measure what is electric impedance tomography problem, we need to recover. The Riemannian surface from its Dirichlet to Neumann map and uh, uh, the natural distance uh, in this uh, in this uh, problem for the data is uh, just uh, operator norm the, the norm of difference uh, of the norm of operator norm of difference of Dirichlet to Neumann maps, but the natural distance between uh, the conformal classes under reconstruction it, it turns out to be it turns out to be techmuller Teich Teich space so in a sense uh, this uh, dmitry dmitry result i think uh, maybe it can be improved but uh, not substantially definitely not uh, substantially so this is my comment as a co-author and uh, also, please, if anybody has questions, remarks, uh, please. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have one question, Dimitri. Uh, uh, please, Rakesh. Yes. Uh -huh. So uh, what about the, the impedance case? So that's a very special case of this. So what does your result uh, say in that case? Uh, we uh, cannot read the impedance case yet. Um, our technique uh, used uh, holomorphic functions. Uh, 
uh, that is uh, their real and imaginary parts are harmonic without uh, the impedance, without the resistance, without the impedance. Uh, but um, I hope we, <laughs> we, uh, we will treat this problem in the future. Okay, so my, I mean, I, I, I don't do elliptic problems. I'm not very well aware of it. Now, there are some uh, results which say that uh, there cannot be Lipschitz stability in the certain norms on the impedance. Uh, there are some counterexamples and stuff. Do you, are you aware of those things? Like, I'm not very confident about these things, but do you know anything about that? Uh, uh, I'm I'm not uh, familiar with uh, the results for the case uh, of non-constant impedance, um, uh, and uh, in, in this case uh, we need uh, some. Um, in in this case, uh, um, there is uh, another definition of uh, of stability. This uh, it is. Uh, uh, it is closeness uh, of function of uh, uh, of impedance uh, impedances. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, in in this case, uh, um, the uh, measure of closeness is uh, more geometrical. It is Steichmüller distance. Uh, these are different uh, things. Uh, Completely. Okay. Okay. I see. So, yeah, for example, uh, if G uh, really was very roughly speaking, very roughly speaking, as to okay, the problem okay. with uh, conductivity, we know almost nothing. <laughs> I see. Why? Yeah, <laughs> because yes. our approach is based upon is based upon the use of uh, algebra, the algebra of holomorphic functions. But if you in inject, if you introduce uh, non-trivial conductivity then this algebra disappears and up to this moment we don't know what to do with that so uh, so maybe i misunderstood so what are what are the conditions on your g the little g can you re repeat them uh, the condition on the little g uh, okay uh little what is little g? The, metric, the, metric, the metric. So, I mean, I, I'm not sure. Do you, so do you impose any sort of analyticity or anything like that on G or not? No, no, no. Uh, and the, uh, the matter is that uh, the, the matrix uh, is just, uh, is just smooth. Uh, but uh, we consider two dimensional case uh, and in this case, uh, the metric mm, defines complex structure. And uh, actually, the matrix, uh, of course, is, equiv is conformally equivalent to some uh, to some uh, analytic metric. I see. Um, I see. Okay. Okay. Uh, but uh, the the space of harmonic functions doesn't depend on conformal on conformal factor. So what if your metric is, you know, some function sigma x times i, then what happens? Isn't that the impedance case? The mm -hmm. algebra disappears. <laughs> if you no, 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 sigma... no, no, no. Oh. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, we have, uh, we have uh, usual Laplacian, usual Laplacian, uh, no uh, impedances. Uh, okay. All right, and the example that I'm quoting of the you know the non non uh, Lipschitz stability, it's uh, I don't know this very well, but it's someone called Mandache M A N D A C H E. I've seen his name in, quoted in different papers about the you know not having Lipschitz stability for the impedance problem. Rakesh, it concerns it uh, concerns to usual metrics, but not. Take Muller metric. That's right. That's yeah. the point. Yeah, yeah. Right. Take Muller metrics turns metric turns out to be most relevant to this to this problem uh, to this problem. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, one of achievements is that, uh, as such, it is found it is found uh, uh, in in this work something like this. Yeah, no, no. Uh, I, I, 
the I need to start the book is very impressive. I, uh, it's very impressive. And, uh, and you know, I remember now, so when you were asking me questions for my results, whether there is stability or not, now I can mm -hmm. see where, where that question is arising. And it's very interesting metric that you've used here. That's... Yeah, yeah. yeah, yes. The Tyke Miller matrix is a classical uh, matrix, but we adapt uh, the definitions uh, to the case of, of surfaces with boundary, with uh, the joint, with the common boundary. And uh, I need uh, to comment uh, um, the space of uh, uh, surfaces with the, the boundary, conformal classes of surfaces with the boundary. Uh, it is a finite dimensional space. It is uh, uh, an orbifold. Um, mm -hmm. um, and uh, the space of uh, Dirichlet to Neumann map, if uh, it um, if we take quotient space by reparameterizations, it also finite dimensional. And uh, here, um, and the solving path are is uh, the map between um, orbifolds. Yes. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay, more questions, comments? No more questions. So the session, today's session is over. Thanks to everybody for a very good job. And uh, see everybody tomorrow. Goodbye.